everyone and welcome back to the channel and to another video from up here in the uh, the Great Yorkshire Rainforest. So we've uh, spent the last few hours just prepping the firewood, having a look around the woods, checking out some of the mushrooms that are growing here. It's the middle of uh, October. So yeah, um, but time's uh, pushing on. It's getting a bit dark. I've just cracked open an ale. It is a Friday. This is a winter warmer ale. It's uh, a Sainsbury's taste the difference. 5.3%. It's really nice actually. So uh, cheers everyone. Ah, oh, beautiful. So what we're going to do this evening is cook up some some steak and chips on a, a Petromax FS56 fireball grill type thing, uh, which I'll show you just now actually. And you can see behind we've got a an LLP parachute rigged up there. So I'm kind of building a a permanent bushcraft camp underneath this. It uh, works really well actually. So I'll probably not get a, an opportunity to show you this tonight because we're losing light quite rapidly. But uh, I'm going to be here all day tomorrow, so I'll give you a closer look then. But it's uh, it's fantastic. It actually usually sags, but because the fire is roaring underneath, it's kind of like it's like a hot air balloon. Ah, yeah. So I'll, I'll show you the uh, the Petromax dish that I've got. Well, folks, this is the Petromax FS56. It's a 56 centimetre diameter uh, hot plate. I guess that's what you would describe it as. You can use it as a fireball, but it's uh, perfect for grilling meat on and uh, you know frying vegetables and that kind of stuff. I've had it now for a couple of weeks. I've used it over the last couple of weekends. I had the lads over last weekend to do some tree felling for me. So we uh, fried a lot of sausages on here, bacon, black pudding. We fried some beef. So it's, uh, it's getting some use. Um, if you watch my last video, you'll have uh, seen my Petromax Wars. I got the Petromax tripod lashing kit and the chain wasn't very good. Uh, so I had to replace the chain. Now, this one came without any legs. <laughs> they found the way out of the packaging and uh, the company who I bought it off, they were useless. Uh, it's a long story, but I haven't got any legs for it. Um, so I just kind of lay it down over the fire on, on some, uh, some tripod rods over two logs which I will demonstrate uh, later on this evening but it works fine so I've got the TGM Metalworks mini fire anchor with me here I've got a 16 centimeter zebra can so Tris has kindly prepared some potato chunks which we're going to parboil for no longer than about five minutes and then uh, we'll lay down the fire grill get some oil in or we'll fry these potatoes off Hope you'll be able to see this guys, but I've just got a couple of, of tripod legs here. A couple of iron tripod legs, so I'll just rest them there over these two logs. And then the hot plate. We'll just sit over the fire like that. It's nice and sturdy, it's not going anywhere. So I've just got some very light olive oil here, which we're going to put in. Get the potato on there. Well folks, these potatoes are done. 
I'm just going to move them over to the edges so they don't burn. I'll get the meat in the middle there. There's plenty of oil there. Nice trip. Mm. Ooh, like Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, guys, we're done here. Just gonna serve up. Look at that. Beautiful. Now we just have to figure out where to get there. Well guys, the uh, steak and chips was great. We didn't do a taste test because we were both pretty hungry, weren't we? We were. Yeah, so we just got stuck straight in. <laughs> and we've stoked the fire up and we're just gonna chill out around the campfire for the rest of the evening, I think. Drink a few more beers. So cheers, everyone. Cheers, cheers. Tris. Uh, lie in this morning it's about 10 o'clock had a couple of cups of coffee in bed and I've just got up to do some work so um I've got a lot of firewood to prep actually so last weekend I had my mates around and we brought down this pine I'll just give you a look at it it's a uh, it's an old Scots pine which was dead and it was actually wrapped up in that oak tree there so uh, it was a pretty difficult job. I didn't want it to, it was leaning uh, to the right hand side. And I didn't want it to fall and squash Triss's orchard that she's got on the go there. So we had to tie some rope around it. And I think there was five of us and we just had to kind of pull it. So it landed down on this grassy ride and we managed to do it, it didn't destroy anything else. Yeah, apart from a, a bit of a willow tree there, but it was it was totally rotten. I was hoping it would all be good firewood, you know, well seasoned, but uh, it's gone beyond that. You can just kind of see how rotten it is. But there's a bit towards the base of the trunk here. Now I did chop some off last weekend and it did burn. You can see how damp it is though. But I think I'll be able to process that and use that on the fire today and uh, I'll just leave this here for the for the insects so the chainsaw didn't last long at all the batteries died pretty quickly so it's back to the old school method of the bow saw but I've got all day and this is a great workout so at least I'll earn me beer for this evening Well folks, it's lunchtime. I'll just give you a look at the, the setup just in case you couldn't see it properly last night in the dark. So I'm using some of that uh, pine that I've just chopped up from that dead tree and it's really not very good at all. It's very damp. But uh, I'm just gonna have some bacon and eggs, a bit of black pudding and a few mushrooms. 
so what I've got there should be enough for that. So we're getting on into the afternoon now. I've done all the wood splitting I'm gonna to do today. I've prepped all the firewood for this evening. We're gonna be using the Petromax uh, FS56 again to cook some lamb steaks, I think I've got tonight with a bit of fried rice. I'm gonna cook some bell peppers on there as well. So I'm just out to collect some uh, small sticks for the campfire. Now this is a pile of wood which has been here for um, almost a couple of years, I think it was when we when we coppiced the hazel a few summers ago and the, the thick stuff underneath provides a really good habitat for, for insects and small creatures but the stuff on top here that you can see is excellent for the campfire so I'm just going to grab a few handfuls of this and this is one of the benefits I think of having a base camp you know you, you do something and then you wait and you wait and you wait and then it becomes a, a useful resource I mean the firewood's exactly the same. I've just started using the firewood from the Norwegian round stack, which uh, you know I built that 15 months ago, and it's only you know just about ready to burn now. I think you could burn it after about 12 months, but I wouldn't burn it in a wood burner or anything like that, or or in your house. Fine on an open fire. It's just still a bit damp and smoky. And it'll kind of suck your chimney up. Well guys, I'll give you a closer look at the parachute canopy. You can see it behind me, it's kind of like slouching at the moment. Last night when the fire was on underneath it, it was kind of filling out. But it's, it's pretty windy at the moment and it's kind of, it breathes like a lung. Like when the wind blows, it just kind of expands and then uh, contracts. Crazy. You'll notice that it's kind of, um, it dips down at one end. And that's because it's so big, I just didn't have the space to, to put it in. It was, I think it's 40 foot diameter. So it's a, it's a huge space underneath it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take the, the camera off the tripod and we'll go and have a closer look at it. Right folks, so this is a, it's a low level parachute. Now I believe that this is pretty much standard issue from 1991 or 1992 onwards. Uh, for paratroopers all around the world, I think, but uh, I could have just made that up. But it's made out of nylon, um, and as I mentioned, it's <laughs> it's like 40 foot diameter, so it is a, a huge space. And obviously, because of the the shape of them, and, and it is a parachute, you can't really get a taut, you know, like a a proper shelter. So it does move around a bit in the wind, but I think that's part of the the attraction. Now it it does originally come with netting on the side I don't know if you can just make out on that uh, on that bit of rope there you can see the white uh, string where I've cut the netting off I didn't really want to leave the, the netting on um, now to get it up oh, it was a nightmare I'll just give you a look here at how I've how I've got it suspended it's kind of suspended from a, a bit of rope, which is approximately, oh, it's probably about 30 foot up that pine there. And it was really, really hard to get up there. I put the step ladders some way up and then I actually used this bit of hazel. Um, but I've chopped, since chopped about six foot off the bottom of this. So I kind of climbed up the step ladders with the rope on the end and uh, just kind of shuffled it as far up the tree as I could. And then I brought the, the ridge line over to this tree here. Let's just get underneath here. And uh, kind of done the same thing. I'll just see if I can zoom in and see how I've uh, you know, tried to kind of tie it up there. So I managed to push it all the way up there with the stick and then you can see it kind of comes down and then I and then I tied it off there <laughs> so it was a it was a right carry on and I kind of I put a loop 
in the middle of the, the rope and then I tied a rope to the parachute itself, put it through the loop and then I was able to hoist the parachute up and there's um, I think there's 28 or 29 of these tie down points so you can see they're kind of they're going everywhere <laughs> I wouldn't like to run through here in the dark you could quite possibly lose your head so yeah so I've got these all kind of pulled out uh, so like th this bit here is actually really really taut but as you can see there's plenty of flex and plenty of movement left in the nylon um, now just to kind of prop it up even further I kind of felled this young birch and I was able to kind of just get it up there it's got like a Y on the end and just uh, kind of threaded it through the top there and pushed up the rope just to try and get it uh, as high as I can because it does need to be you know at least like 25 foot high I think or, or perhaps more than that if you can manage it but um yeah I've got the fire pit down here and I, I I put it I didn't put it directly under the the hole it's just kind of offset a little bit just in case it hammers down with rain the uh the fire pit will stay dry and the smoke just kind of climbs up the sides and then it uh and then it, it either comes out from underneath the parachute or out through that hole so what I've done in in terms of the camp I want to develop it over the coming uh, weeks and months I've just got a little bit of a workstation here with my chopping block and my axe and me me hazel club which uh, comes in useful I've got a nail and pad there to save me knees I've got some freshly sawn timber there probably just leave that there actually for a, a couple of years to season the fire pits there with the uh, the wood for this evening I'll probably end up burning all this I think and then I've got these other little uh, trunks cut which are just useful when the lads were over last week you can just stand them up and put your beer on and then I've just got a bit of a perch here for bits and bobs got the old Peramax dish hanging there um, these bits of hazel here actually fit in the Petromax tripod lashing kit and I hang my lamp up on there which you'll have seen last night and now we've got a, a bench here which has got me washing up gear on and, and yeah and that's it you'll notice it's a little bit higher here obviously because this is where you kind of walk in and out so I, I made sure to kind of raise the the paracord there just to pull it up a bit so yeah it's uh it's great actually um it's really nice sitting in here on the evening I mean all last winter we were kind of in the shed as soon as it got dark because we didn't we just simply didn't have enough wood to burn you know and the wood burner in the shed's far more efficient than this open fire so yeah this is the uh the bushcraft base camp how it looks at the moment and what I want to do in the future I think is just build a couple of wooden tables out here you know a couple of permanent tables so yeah there it is So Tris is just walking back to the truck. To, uh, what, are you, what are you gonna get, Tris? No, he's just taking some stuff back. Well, uh, good luck. What happened? Did you say the jab or you?
Well guys, it's Sunday morning. I've done the washing up and we're all packed up and ready to, to head back to civilization. The weather's changed a little bit this morning. It's cloudy and it's drizzling. But uh, yeah, it was a good weekend. So the Petromax FS56, is it any good? Yes, it is. It's fantastic. A uh, really useful pan. I mean, we've cooked on it all weekend. Um, if, you, if you're cooking for a group, obviously the size of it, this uh, at the FS56 model, it's big enough, you know, to easily cook for, for five, six people, perhaps even more. And it's really useful if you want to get everything just into one pan, uh, vegetables, rice, meat, uh, so it's pretty handy. Obviously the downsides are it's fairly large and heavy. I think it weighs some, something near seven kilograms. So you'll not be taking it backpacking with you. But for a you know base camp kitchen, it's a really, really useful bit of kit. Now in terms of cleaning, um, obviously you're not supposed to use any detergent on because you'll remove the, the non-stick film that you'll eventually build up each time you use it. So what I done last night after I cooked the lamb, I actually just poured some water onto it and that heated up over the fire and I was just able to give it a bit of a rub and I had a look this morning and that removed most of the uh, the food and I just went over it again with a with a cloth and some lukewarm water so you can feel that there's a nice oily film on it which will help prevent rust and obviously that'll help uh, build up a non-stick surface as the uh, as the years go on so yeah I recommend it nice bit of kit well that's it folks so as ever thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch up with you again in the next one